In this video, I will show you how to use a powerful tool called Adobe Podcast. Let's get started. So you'll find Adobe Podcast at podcast.adobe.com. And what is the purpose of Adobe Podcast? It's meant to eliminate or at least reduce several barriers to recording podcasts or other media. One challenge you may have is you might not have a studio or a quiet place in which to record. That's a barrier for a lot of people. What about equipment? Many people don't have quality equipment they can use to record a podcast that will sound good. And one of the most common barriers that people have is lack of time. Editing a podcast or a video really can be very, very time consuming. Well, introducing Adobe Podcast. Adobe Podcast features a few different tools that can really help you as you start creating a podcast or working on a YouTube channel or whatever it may be. These tools will help you to clean up audio to make it sound basically studio quality. It also helps with the editing process and with setting up your equipment. Adobe Podcast really does help you overcome these barriers and takes away any excuse that you might have for why you're not starting your own podcast or YouTube channel. So let's jump over to Adobe Podcast. Here I am on the home page and I've signed in and let's go straight to the flagship tool in Adobe Podcast. It's called Studio. Right now it's still in beta, but it's very usable and fantastic. So I'm going to click go to Studio and here I have a button that I can click to start a new project. Now below, I have a whole bunch of projects that I've created in the past. And then we also have some templates that you can explore. And you can even get more templates if you want to. But for this video, I'm just going to focus here on new project. So I click new project and it comes up with an empty project for me to work in. I'm going to click here where it says untitled and I'm going to call this episode five field trip report. Let's say I'm a classroom teacher and we just recently went on a field trip to the zoo and my students and I are going to create a podcast about that experience. Now that I've named my episode, I'm just about ready to start recording. Before I do though, I want you to see that it is possible to invite guests to record with you. You can click here to do that, or you can go up here to the upper right and click invite guests. Now there are a couple of powerful things about invite guests. Number one, look what it says. Anyone with this link that I'm about to create can join this recording session without signing in. In other words, they do not have to have an Adobe podcast account. They don't have to log in to Adobe. They don't have to do any of that. They just click the link and they will be able to join you virtually through Adobe podcast. The other powerful thing about inviting guests, it's not anything I can show you here, but what happens is if someone joins you virtually from their own computer, they will be identified in the transcript that's going to be generated as a different person than you. And so you could say, okay, my name is Charles. And then the other person's name is Amanda. And as Charles talks, his audio will be labeled as Charles. And when Amanda talks, her audio will be labeled as Amanda. So this is a really good feature of inviting guests and recording from different computers not in the same room. In this case though, it's just me. I can just click start recording and then begin talking. Here we go. On a sunny Monday morning, our third grade class embarked on an exciting field trip to the local zoo. We were armed with our back graceful giraffes and playful zebras. Okay, so I've finished my recording. But let's take a look at the results. Now that I've finished recording, Adobe Podcast has actually automatically transcribed my audio recording so that I can see the words that I spoke and recorded. And if you look closely, you'll notice some little notations, some little marks that uh, signify different things. For example, this dot here signifies a pause or a delay. So there's a significant pause right there at the beginning of my recording. I'm going to click on that and just tap the delete key on the keyboard. Now I could click here on the delete button. That also works, but I'll just tap delete on the keyboard. Now let's click play. On a sunny Monday morning. So notice what's happened by deleting that dot. Not only did it delete it in the transcript, but it also shortened the delay in my actual recording. It edited the recording itself. Let's look down here in the third paragraph. Look, I made some significant mistakes here, and so I decided to start over. So I'm going to actually click and drag and select that and tap delete on the keyboard. I just wanted to get rid of it. I need to get rid of this as well. 
So I'm clicking and dragging to highlight what I want to delete, including this little dot here that signifies a delay or a pause. I'll tap delete. So that's not perfect, but I'll just delete that dot. And again, magically, as I edit the audio, deleting mistakes and things like that, those portions of the audio recording are also deleted and removed. It's amazing. This is a fantastic way to edit a podcast or any audio recording. Let's say that this is now perfect. It's not. I could keep working on it and make it perfect, but for now, let's pretend that it is. Notice that I could upload a pre-recorded audio clip. Maybe I went to someone's home and interviewed them and recorded it. I could upload that recording to add to my podcast episode. I can also add music just by clicking here. I can upload my own music, or I could choose one of these music styles, maybe Curiosity. I have intros, I have outros, transitions, and backgrounds. These are all very useful. I'm going to go with a short introduction and a short outro. So with those added, now I just need to make sure I put them in the right place. So I'm going to click on this particular intro and drag it up to the top of my podcast episode. And then my outro, I'll click and drag and drop it at the bottom of my podcast episode at the end. And now let's listen to how this sounds. I click play. On a sunny Monday morning, zebras. Okay, and I, I skipped to the middle part of the podcast there. But the idea is I have my intro, it goes to the main portion of my podcast episode, and then it goes to the outro. This can all be organized and worked on here in Adobe Podcast. If I want to or need to, I can put in some placeholders. Let's say I did record an interview and I want to leave a placeholder for it. Maybe I'll be getting it next week or something and I'd like to add it in here. That's what we can use placeholders for. We can also apply some filters. So for example, let's say the audio recording for this portion of my episode, maybe it had some ambient noise. Maybe a fan was running or something and it reduced the quality of the recording and I, I'm just not super happy with it. I could click here on filters and enhance the speech. This would get rid of the sound of the fan. It gets rid or at least reduces the ambient noise. And you can apply more strength to that or less strength. So you can play with that to get the perfect level and then that will be applied to your audio. Okay, let's say that this episode is completely finished. What can I do now that it's done? Well, I want to show you one of the most powerful things you can do with this, which is share. But before we get to that, let me show that you can just click download and it will download the podcast episode. You could simply download just the audio as an MP3 or a WAV file. You could download a transcript of what you have recorded, which is very useful. You could download original recordings. Let's say I have two or three people in my podcast episode. We could separate those into three different files, one for each participant. And then the option I'm going to choose in this case is an audiogram, an animated transcript video. And I will click Create Audiogram. It does take a little time, but when I'm done, I will have my audio recording with a WAV file that bounces up and down that's kind of fun to watch. And I'll have text transcript that is synced to my voice. And this is something I can upload to YouTube. I could upload it to an audio program if I want to. I could share it in social media. There's lots of nice ways I could use this. Okay, it's finished and it's downloaded to my computer. Here it is and I can click play. I'm gonna skip ahead through the intro. Our third grade class embarked on an exciting field to the local zoo. All right, so this is a pretty great feature. It's a way to make audio also visual. I'm going to back out of this part of, uh, of Adobe Podcast and I'm back in the field trip report because I want you to see that it is possible to share what we've created here so far as a template. This may just be the beginning of the episode, kind of setting the stage for it. If I want my students or someone else to then finish the project, or maybe I want each of my students to work on it and finish their own version of it, I can click share, create template, and then I can share this link and anyone with the template link will be able to start their own new project from this template. They won't be overriding my own project. They won't change it at all. They'll just have this starting point that I've set up and then they can work on it and finish it themselves. That's a wonderful option, especially for teachers and students. 
So I'm going to jump back to the home page because I want you to see that uh, despite how exciting and cool this feature is of Studio in Adobe Podcast, it's not the only tool that we have. We have Mic Check and we have Enhance Speech. So stay through the end of the video to learn about these two great features. Let's go into Enhance Speech next. What this is for is what if you already have your episode or your audio recording or even a video that's already been recorded, it's done, except the audio quality isn't very good. It doesn't sound the way you would want it to sound, like it was recorded in a studio. In that case, you can upload it and have enhanced speech fix the audio and make it sound studio quality. Let's do an example. So earlier, I clicked Choose Files and I selected an audio clip that I recorded on my cell phone. And there was a fan going and, you know, some other ambient noise that made it pretty low quality. You can hear it here. Students, in this unit, um, the focus is going to be on photosynthesis. That's just not very good quality. I clicked to open it and enhance speech, analyzed the file for a while, and then gave me this result. So I'm going to click play. Students, in this unit, um, the focus is going to be on... So that is after the audio has been enhanced. And remember, this was recorded on a cell phone with no external microphone, no additional equipment, just a cell phone. I'm going to turn this off so you can hear the original. It's a vital process by which green plants, algae, and... Now let's turn it on to hear the results. Bacteria convert light energy, usually from the sun, into chemical energy stored in glucose. Hopefully you can hear the difference there. Now I can adjust the strength and make it even more powerful or less powerful. When I'm happy with the results, I can click download and it gives me the enhanced version of the audio recording. This tool has saved me so much time and enabled me to create many more YouTube videos and podcasts than I ever would have been able to do because it could fix poor quality audio. Jumping back to the Adobe Podcast homepage, I want you to see the third tool that we have in Adobe Podcast. It's called Mic Check. And I'll click Go to Mic Check and I'll click Start. Now the purpose of Mic Check is simply to help you set up your recording space the way it should be including your computer settings. So how do you know how close to be to your microphone? How do you know how loud to turn up the computer input volume? Is the room that you're recording in too loud? Is the ambient noise too loud or is it not a problem? That's what mic check is for. It tests for all of those things. So I can click start and then I'm just gonna click test mic and I'll say this phrase. How is my microphone setup and placement? I click stop and then Adobe Podcast Mic Check is going to test how I'm doing. According to this, my mouth is too far from the microphone. The gain on my microphone is not high enough. I need to turn that louder. What about background noise? It's actually excellent. What about the echo in this room? Excellent. So this tool alerts me to things I can do to make my recording sound better. Move closer to reach the sweet spot. So this tool is more simple than the other two but it can be very helpful as you get started creating podcast episodes or any other audio recordings. So I hope you can see that these great, useful, powerful tools are worth looking into. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member, but you could also support me through my Patreon account. You could click the thanks button below the video, or you could buy channel merch, and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.